everybody. I'm Brooks. Um, uh, like LT said, I am a, a, a an alum. specifically. Uh, so Greg, you're the only central person here, um, but, but if you are ever interested in uh, the Austin campus, uh, give me a shout or the Dallas one. Um, but yeah, I don't want to uh, talk too much about myself because we're about to do a little bit of that too. <laughs> but hello, everybody. So I uh, was living and working in Austin for a few years. I uh, moved to Austin for college. I um, am actually a big humanities person, uh, at least educationally. I have way more of a background in uh, Shakespeare and uh, restoration performance uh, art and things like that. Um, not a lot of coding in my background, <laughs> but I was uh, working in tech um, in sales primarily and in account management for a couple of years after college. And I had some friends go through Hack, Your Act, Hack Reactor before it was Hack Reactor. It used to be called Maker Square, um, and now it's galvanized. So it's got a lot of names. But um, uh, prior to joining Hack Reactor, I was doing a lot of tech sales and uh, account management within tech. And I was getting very tired of really defending tech I didn't like very much. <laughs> um, and I wanted to know uh, how it was built and how it was made. So for me, primarily, the interest came from uh, having just the lightest association with technology and really wanting to know how to make it myself instead of defending it or selling it. <laughs> um, so I, like I said, I had some, a bunch of different friends who had already gone through the program um, and talked about it uh, with them and decided to move on with it. <laughs> so actually, just for context as well, um, I ended up attending the program in November of 2017. Uh, one of the uh, biggest kind of misconceptions about Hack Reactor, um, initially at least, for people who uh, just begin to start their research is they assume that Hack Reactor is very much a traditional lecture style, like educational environment with some hands-on uh, work involved. Uh, it's in fact a lot more like a, like a seminar class almost like in an English degree or, or a history program or something like that, where you are uh, working together with others. Um, so one of the things that really helped uh, it, from my educational background specifically was how to ask really good questions, right? Because uh, there's not a lot of handholding done with a program like Hack Reactor. So you quickly figure out in Hack Reactor and something I had a little bit of a leg up on was uh, what do I need to, what do I need to know that I don't know? <laughs> and asking and figuring out how to get to that point to where I finally understood it. For me particularly uh, is just the, 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 the personal and anecdotal knowledge that I knew that it worked where I, I mean, I, I knew a handful of graduates at that point when I decided to start my research. Um, I knew, I think like four people who had gone through uh, over the course of three different years and various different classes through the program and seen that they had gotten great results. Um, someone who had, was only a few cohorts above me, their first job out of Hack Reactor was at Indeed, um, which was, it was very cool to see. So for me, it was, um, personal and anecdotal like reference to, oh yeah, this is a really successful program and this actually works um, because the people I knew who went through the program were also theater and English people who also were terrible at math, terrible at science, had no technology background. Um, and then they're working at freaking Indeed. So <laughs> I knew from the get-go that Hack Reactor was a program that worked. I did some light research into others, um, but it's really hard to beat <laughs> like personal evidence, right? Um, that there is success to be found in this program. So yeah, that was the biggest deciding factor for me. Uh, it was how to live and sit with um, being just okay at something, like in mediocrity. Because <laughs> it is a uh, hard as nails program. And um, I think in traditional educational environments we're particularly in america we're conditioned to 
uh, aim just for 100% success. You're trying and you're conditioned to believe in that kind of learning environment. And for me, uh, the uh, the Hack Director program was a, a tough adjustment for myself. And it, it, it taught me a lot about patience and being comfortable in within that kind of like fail state pretty much. Um, they, this, this is said about software engineering in general, but it's definitely true about learning software engineering. 90% of software engineering is failure. And then 10%, you feel like a God because you're finally getting everything working, right? And that's pretty much the same thing with Hacker Actor is in that kind of learning environment, you are 90% uh, of the time, you are confused as hell and you're not really sure what's going on. Um, and you're trying to get things to work and then it clicks. Um, and that's such a brief moment of time, but I really learned how to adjust to that. A, a lot of people who come from the kind of background that I have, like a humanities-based background, um, go into something like uh, any kind of collaborative work environment and you think, oh, I know how to work with other people. Like I've been doing this, I know how to do this. Um, and really I think what Hacker Actor does really, really well in terms of soft skills is uh, it puts those kinds of soft skills to the test um, because uh, it's, uh, Hacker Actor operates in the same way that real work environments do where you are constantly working with other people and with teams and um, getting approval from others and uh, explaining things in a non-technical way. And uh, it really puts your ability to work with others to the test. So I think one of the biggest things that Hacker Actor gave me was, um, well, one, it showed me, you don't, you thought you were good at working with people, but now you really are. <laughs> um, mainly just because uh, you're in a high pressure environment. No one's having a great time. <laughs> Everyone's very stressed out by like the, the material that they're learning. So uh, no one is at their like politest, I'll say <laughs> through the program, um, but pushing through that and learning to work with others and, and forcing yourself to be a good teammate and be a good uh, co-educator and be a good um, student along with others really, uh, those skills really grew within me, at least. Uh, I would say that was the big, most surprising thing, mainly because going into the program, I thought I was good. <laughs> I thought I was very great at working with people. And little did I know that I was, uh, that, that was really going to be put to the test. <laughs> day-to-day -day, uh, in there are more details on our website about like the various phases but um, in broad strokes the typical day-to-day -day would be me getting up around like 6 30 or 7 in the morning depends on how prepared I was going to be for the day and how put together I was going to be for the day um, and uh, taking the bus downtown to campus um, and uh, we would start off with a morning meeting um, with everyone who was on campus and uh, jumping straight into work pretty much um, with not that many breaks. <laughs> and, um, that was another thing that we kind of uh, had to learn is to how to figure out to put those into our days. Um, so most of the time what we were doing was working through sprints or if we were working on projects, working on uh, sprints within those projects. Uh, but taking chunks of things that needed to be done, whether it was a two-day assignment or if it was a large full stack application that we were building, we were uh, taking the time and scheduling that out and working in chunks um, and usually ending the day with some sort of uh, uh, summary of what had happened, some sort of stand up at the end of the day where either my partner and I or my team and I or an instructor and I would get together and hash it out. And then I would be home by 10-ish. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it was a long day, but that's kind of broad strokes a day to day. <laughs> like I said before, at Hack Reactor, you're, you're always working with other people. Um, that's aimed to, uh, because that's how it is in the real world, right? In, in the industry of software engineering, you are constantly working with other people. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are at, you're both holding hands at a keyboard at the same time, but you're constantly communicating and working with others. 
Um, so because of that, knowing what you needed um, was not enough. You also needed to know what your partner needed, right? Um, so it was about starting off a working relationship and constantly maintaining contact with the people that you were working with in order to determine, hey, what works for you? What works for me? What works for her? What works for all of us? So that we can uh, figure that out and, and build those in as a group. Um, there are actually some students who didn't do as well because they would just leave. They wouldn't talk to their group. They would just disappear for a while and pretty much everyone would suffer because of that. So that was something that I picked up through the program on uh, like how to take care of myself was knowing what I needed, but also knowing what everyone else needed so that we could all take care of those needs at the same time. <laughs> I have a pretty strong background in, in just teaching uh, in uh, like educational or sorry, elementary school teaching and middle school teaching. I did a lot of that in college and an opportunity popped up right after Hack Reactor uh, at a uh, uh, summer camp for kids that was happening at Hack Reactor. So I just didn't leave for a while. <laughs> um, right after the boot camp, immediately after graduation, um, I was actually able to work as an, uh, I think it's now called uh, software engineer in resident. Um, essentially, it's like a recent graduate who is working-ish as a TA. Um, what that allowed me was uh, I got to work and teach with students and uh, uh, kind of added bonus was I basically got to take the whole course again by teaching it to other people, which was great for me. <laughs> um, general journey after that, though, I worked uh, as a teacher through this program that through the boot camp uh, or through the summer camp for a while, um, just teaching elementary school kids and middle school kids uh, just basic web development stuff. Um, not, not teaching them full stack engineering, mind you, <laughs> teaching them how to build like my favorite tacos web pages and things like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, right after working with them, uh, I managed to find a job um, at the University of Texas at Austin as a software engineer there. Um, worked there for about two years. Um, and now I found my way back here. A hundred percent, I felt like a good developer. Um, I'll say that right off the bat. Uh, you walk out of Hack Reactor, um, and it, hindsight definitely helps with this emotion that you have right after you graduate, but you look back at everything that you've learned in three months and you go, holy crap. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. I learned how to do all of that. Um, so I felt I was, an, I felt by the end of the program, by graduation, that I was an extremely competent software engineer. Um, now, job applications and getting a career as a software engineer is almost a different conversation. <laughs> and um, what I felt confident in through my job application process was that I uh, knew how to be a software engineer. I knew how to code. I knew how to build an application. I knew how to uh, answer questions pretty well. Um, what I felt shaky in, which unfortunately just comes with experience in this industry is answering technical questions, answering technical interview questions. Um, you get a ton, of, luckily you get a ton of practice throughout the entire program, building up from very, very simple sample problems all the way up to just ex like real world interview questions um, through the program. You get a lot of practice doing those. The unfortunate uh, reality of the situation is that um, you never really get used to it in an interview environment until you do it a few times. Um, typically, I know uh, this was the case when I was going through the program, uh, they, they encourage students to budget for at least another three months following the program um, uh, for the job search. That number may be different at this point, but um, it really kind of depends on the, the economy at the time. <laughs> but uh, I know I was told, hey, budget for three months following the program. Um, so you can really take that time to uh, uh, end up with, or to, to have the job experience, interview process um, appropriately. And what I mean by that is that uh, vast majority of the people that I know that went through the program had like two or three offers by the end of it that they were able to then negotiate for higher salaries. So that's really why they kind of encourage the, the three month process. It's not that it's gonna take you three months to get an offer, it may, and that's totally fine. Um, but they say typically three months allows you to get the kinds of offers that um, you deserve at the level that at your coding.
a lot of what um, this obviously varies from company to company, but um, for the most part, um, what I saw through my job interview process and what our uh, career counselors through the program uh, mentioned to us is that through technical interview questions, um, or or there are these things called whiteboard questions, whiteboarding, um, where you are laying out uh, how you would solve a problem. Um, a lot of companies, uh, not every single one, but uh, a lot of companies uh, are not necessarily looking for you answering the question right there and then correctly. They're more looking for your thought process, the ways that you're solving the problems, the, the creative solutions that you can bring to the team, right? So by being able to communicate those things very clearly and by being able to, uh, speaking to another person, walk through your, your processes, your technical uh, skills, uh, or even just logicking through a problem um, and asking good questions before you start solving the problem, all of those things carry over, um, which is why a lot of the soft skills that they teach you in Hack Reactor, uh, they become very apparent at the end <laughs> when you start to use them in an, in an interview capacity, right? Um, and it, 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 it's just so immensely important by the time that you're actually graduating and uh, using them, right? <laughs> So that's a tricky question because I, I I would say that when you come out of uh, and this this gets a little technical too, um, I I would say that when you come out of uh, Hack Reactor, you're prepared to be a developer, but I think you're more prepared to be a, a software engineer, uh, which I think is an even broader umbrella than a developer. Even <laughs> and I think both of them though. Um, uh, a developer or a software engineer, I think really uh, they're uh, individuals who can contribute to a team, who can solve technical problems and build technical solutions. Mm -hmm.